The AMC Pacer started life as a joke, only for a comedy movie to turn it into a legend. But how exactly did a car widely regarded as one of the worst of all time find itself in the middle of a bidding war? This is the story of the most famous Pacer on Earth, the Mirthmobile, the 1976 AMC from Wayne's World. It's a story of humble beginnings in the 70s, overnight 90s success, neglect at the turn of the century, then arising from the ashes like the flames seen on Garth's car. We'll then find out how a reality TV appearance helped the car cement its place in movie folklore. When the Pacer was released in 1975, its ad campaign claimed, when you get a Pacer, you get a piece of tomorrow. Four years later, AMC stopped making them, but in a weird way, they were right, and not for the reasons the company thought the car would cement its legacy. This would come around 15 years later with the release of one of the most popular cult comedies of all time. Back in the 70s, AMC was busy boasting about the car's girth. At 77 inches, the width was around half its length, which gave it that, let's just say unique, shape. It became known at the time as the fishbowl, and on summer days, the lobster pot. And if you were unlucky enough to boil alive, it'd be a long time because this car was going nowhere fast. The original lightweight Wankel rotary engine, stop sniggering British viewers, had to be dropped because of development complications, and instead the car got an overweight but low-powered six-cylinder engine in production models. So what Pacer owners were left with was a slow fishbowl on wheels, which led to the reputation that only losers drove the car. This would ultimately end up being the reason why it became a hero, as it was two loser heroes, whom we're about to meet, that reclaimed the car as their own. AMC stopped making the Pacer in 1985 as emissions regulations strangled the car out of existence. That and the fact that most people hated it. It was seen as a nerd car by most, which made it the perfect fit for a movie with a nerd making his own TV show in his parents' basement. This was Wayne's World, a Mike Myers vehicle back when he made funny movies. The plot of Wayne's World is simple. Wayne and his best friend Garth are losers, and they make a cult cable TV show that ends up catapulting them to stardom. This would become the parallel story of the Pacer, a loser car about to be catapulted to immortality. Garth's car in the film is dubbed the Mirthmobile by the best friends in the movie. This was because of the laughs they had inside it. Outside, it's hard to look beyond the amazing paint job. This Pacer was bought secondhand by the production team with its original yellow paintwork, but it was decided to repaint the car something more fitting for cable TV slackers, a baby blue finish with flame decals. Of course, there were also the signature mismatched wheels the studio had intentionally put on the car, with factory steel rims on the front and chrome spoked rims on the rear. The production team also removed the heater and the real wheel houses were modified to fit speaker boxes. But the pièce de résistance of the Mirthmobile was of course the licorice dispenser, which needed a hole in the roof to be drilled for mounting. A nice little easter egg on the Pacer is the license plate reading F3B259 that plays homage to the day the music died, or February 3rd 1959, when Buddy Holly, Richie Valance and JP Richardson were involved in a plane crash. This cements Wayne and Garth's love for music and the car as a whole cemented what they were all about. The scene with their friends singing Bohemian Rhapsody in the cramped fishbowl helped send the movie to the top of the box office charts. With the film's overnight success, the Pacer also became a star. Most movies will use several cars during filming, but for this shoot, there was only ever one Mirthmobile. This is why the state it was left in after the cameras stopped rolling would leave fans headbanging for all the wrong reasons. This is until some porn stars got involved. No, not those ones. And helped take the car back to its former glory. Like many movie cars, once the cameras are done rolling, the runners are done running, and the actors are done breaking down, the cars often get left as an afterthought. For over a decade, the Mirthmobile was in limbo until it was put up for auction by the Volo Auto Museum for a modest asking price of $15,000. It's not clear if the car fetched that kind of money, and it once again went back into obscurity, just like it had been in the 1980s. Then, after another decade, it resurfaced spectacularly, like James Bond's Lotus Esprit, to be seen on a second-hand reality show, Porn Stars. The owner of the car at the time revealed he'd paid a museum in Eugene, Oregon for the pleasure of headbanging to Queen inside the vehicle. Apart from two issues, that one, he'd never seen the movie, and two, even if he had, he'd have to rock out on his driveway because the pacer couldn't move. Coupled with this, the vehicle looked like it had been scraped all over with Wayne's guitar, so the car desperately needed some TLC. In the Porn Stars show, Rick Harrison pays $9,500 for the project, and clearly it got the love it deserved, because when it was put up for sale by car auctioneers Barrett Jackson a year later, the car was back to its former glory. It even had the addition of a working stereo system, because even though the car's crowning glory was all about the music being turned up to 11, it didn't have operational speakers during the shoot. The mechanic responsible for the job was simply known as Bob, and he described the process of fixing this car as playing a game of whack-a-mole, because when one thing fixed, something else would break. 
Bob's work was worth it, as all the camera mounting points for filming were intact and usable, as well as the all-important licorice dispenser, which now was full of red contents and not of the mouldy variety. Add to that new brakes, a steering rack, power steering pumps, four new tyres and an alternator, on top of a completely refurbished interior, with a full rat's nest clean, the car was ready to drive to gigs once again. With the Pacer back to its former glory, it was now time for the prospective buyer to take it to immortality where it belonged. The car sold for $37,000 in 2016, which was a modest amount considering the $28,000 that had been put into the car to restore it back to something where a rat wasn't likely to drop from the licorice dispenser. This meant that the gold and silver team behind Porn Stars essentially made a loss when it was sold. However, time was going to prove just how much an icon this car had become. Six years later, the car was put up for auction again, and in this short time, the price rocketed. And I do believe that's a world record for a Pacer. This meant the AMC Pacer, and a loved loser, became a rock star. For anyone who's seen Wayne's World, you'll know that the same thing happens to our slacker heroes in that film. So it seems fitting then that in 2022, the Murph Mobile sold for $71,500 making it the most valuable pacer in the world. There are few other cars that have made quite that transformation from underdog to icon.